Hey gang, what's good? Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Here we are at the Undercroft. We're just uh, doing a little bit of exploring around. Just taking a little bit of a quick peek and poke around here. You know, I was considering leaving to Kehu back up top, right? That we would go and turn in his quest at Prince Aruhi and then come back here. But in the off chance that we do meet the other water shapers, I think it could be a good idea to have him with us. It could make for a fun little interaction, right? We got some more thugs and pirates on up here. All right. Let's see. Is there anything around here that we can actually just yoink up? Man, there's a lot of them there. That's like probably meant to be a full-on combat encounter, right? If you came in here violently. All right. Let's see what we got. Nice. An Cannon shot, repair supplies. Take the shot. There we are. Would take the supplies too, but we're full up. Anything else over here? Oh, look, there is something. Oh, we can take this. Oh, can we use this? Huh. I guess Team Watcher can strip uses. Here, let's quick save. Does this just open? Oh, God. You come upon a weathered skiff. Paint peeling. It rocks languidly in the water. Row to Queen's Berth, or stay here. Huh. All right, we'll stay here for now. Maybe we should leave through that, right? That could be interesting. Maybe we'll have some sort of random fun encounter along the way too? I don't know. But we should definitely see what happens if we leave through that. Though we don't really need to go to Queen's Berth yet at the moment, do we? All right. Renegade Water Shaper. Okay, what all do you have to say? The Water Shaper pales upon catching sight of Takehu. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about you? Yep. These foul waters, or these waters are a foul medium for shaping. Call it undignified if you must. This is honest work. All right. What do you have yeah, over here? Got it. Let's see. And not be Let's seen. see this. Sure. All right. Good. I do like the idea that um, hmm? the, some of the other water shapers have already sort of wisened up and realized, yeah, we need to. Even if it means working under the table a bit, we need to do some shit. And Takehu's just starting to, like, his- we're watching as Takehu's naivete is slowly, but surely, diminished and just eradicated in a major damn way, right? We figured this would happen, but it is still- it's pretty satisfying to witness. Oh, look, does this lead into the old part? Oh, okay. Finally. Let's get this over with. Oh, shit. Oh, god. Gwenfin, hang on, don't go- Oh, she went inside. All right. Fine, let's head on back out here. We may yet end up going to Prince Aruhi to turn this shit in, right? Okay, let's head on up here. And let's see. Oh, look. Lost another crew to the floating hangman we did. Oh, you guys are just generic bruisers and shit. Okay. Huh. Oh, here we go. This looks like an important spot. Yeah, just more dudes here. <laughs> Man, do you think you could- Possibly get a double pull if you came in I here know. hostile. There we, there she is, Captain Mad Morena. All right, what have you got here? Scroll of the, scroll of prayer for the spirit and some scoria. Eh. Okay. And anything over here? Oh look, got a secret chest with a trap. Yeah, we'll have to come back with Maya before we head into the lower city, right? Let's see. What was that person's name again? It was Gwenfin. We don't need Takehu for Gwenfin, right? Let's see. Gwenfin. The Cornet's Call. Okay, yeah, we do not. Though that is a little bit higher ranking. Man, we should probably mm -hmm. go back and set sail for... Sure. Seraphin's place, right? Fuck me. <laughs> Alright. What do we have in this? A couple of swords. Probably not worth trying to steal. But whatever's back there. Definitely worse. Well, here, let, let's take a look in this thing. I shall What's be all discreet. This? Potion of deftness and mail armor. Take the potion, stash the armor. Anything back here on this little balcony? No, not really. Surprised there's not like a ladder there or something. All right. Oh wait, hold up. We can pickpocket. Yeah, my eyes are peeled. That's how Got we it. can make use of this. Look, no vision. Make sure things are sped up here. We should definitely try and pickpocket her first. Uh, oh, look! Mad Morena's key. This key belonged to Ma Captain Mad Morena. 
Oh, yes. And you? Can we get the sorcerer as well? We probably could. Let's see. But first, let's... While our shit is dying down, our heat. Why not? Let's check this out. Uh-oh. I cannot disarm it. Do I wish to trigger it? No. Hmm. Oh, God. It's a check of nine? Good lord, man. All right. Let's head on over here. I guess this is supposed to be a quest that's a little bit higher for us. Yoink. And there we go. Good. You know, maybe we should just fucking risk it and try and pickpocket this dude. We could probably even steal this, right? No, because we'd have to circle around, wouldn't we? We can't steal it from this side of the chair. We would have to go around into the vision cone and get fucked over. All right, that's fine. We can come over here and try and pickpocket the sorcerer. Whew, just barely. Man, did you hear that screaming wail of terror? Like a banshee scream? Cop a leaf. Yeah. Familiar with that. Okay. Hmm? Slippery as Let's indeed. get the team together. There we are. Of and we'll do a quick save here as well. What's up, Captain? The Captain of the Tidebreakers stands stiff-backed before you. Looming, despite her lack of height, her hard, muscled legs spread solidly apart, and she splays thick, calloused hands over her hips. She regards you with a heavy gaze, her chin tipped high. And who, or what, do we have here? Stubby fingers grind impatiently toward the flintlock tucked into her belt. She drums her fingers on the flintlock as she considers to Kehu. We're all stocked up on Silverfin. But this fish is a unique catch. Uh, and I can bite deeper than you might imagine. He narrows his eyes at her. Are you the one responsible for tricking the water shapers into serving your petty errands? Something about the aggression in his tone causes her mouth to split in a crooked grin. Mad Morena turns her gaze back to you. Well, I see it. You've got two options. You can tell me you sent you. Or I can feed you the shaft of my gun. Hmm. A noise told me to find you. Dario sends his regards. <laughs> Streetwise check and 500 copper. I heard there was business being done down here, and thought I'd bring a donation. Retreat, hands up. Took a wrong turn, that's all. <laughs> no one sent me, you just have piss poor security. Alright. Let's go through these first two, because, yeah, they did send me th these parts. Annoy told me to find you. What for? I've already got an emissary. Speak up, Swabby, and be quick about it. My knife arm's twitching. Somebody killed your man, Ulog, and the Raparu still need food. So, Enoi fancies you the new Ulug, eh? Or uh, Ulug, sorry. And you had nothing to do with it. Then I need to know how it happened. Her eyes gleam with a promise of violence. I don't know. Guess that's the way of it sometimes. But it's not what I would have hoped for. She sighs. Ulu wasn't any ruffler. He didn't deserve that. She runs her tongue over her teeth, regaining a measure of calm. Oh, I wonder if we can come back to her with the info. Right? Because given that both of those were like either shrug or I don't know, it feels like that was an opportunity to give her any information that we found, right? Huh. All right. Continue. Everyone in the gullet knows Ulu's my man. Everyone set the Mutaru. Gotta be them what got him. She hawks a great gob of spit on the ground beneath her feet. And though it pains me to say it, if the Mutaru are biting for blood, it's best if I back off. I can't be feeding the Raparu right under their noses. We can go around the Mutaru. What can I do to ensure your operation continues, safely in secret, to see the Raparu properly fed. Yeah, what can I do? Leave the secrecy to me. What you need to prove is that you can be trusted well enough. She winks. Say I happen to have a fella wanting for a full shipment of crude luminous ardor, but I have no ardor to sell. Oh, let's say you did. Let's just say I happened to bust into a place that had a full shitload of it, and I just have pockets and pockets full of this stuff. Loot me no less than six crates, and I'll be, let's say, better inclined to do you a favor. Do we have six crates worth? If you're a particularly daring sort, you might 
snatch it from under their noses. Oh, really? Them valiant trading princox have a stockpile of it in their mill in Queen's Berth. You don't say. Otherwise, you could raid them in shallow waters as they ship it in. Now, if that doesn't tickle your fancy, there is one other that tickles mine. Ply me with enough coin to hire fresh hands, bribe a few officials, enjoy a taste of flesh, and I'm yours. Wait. Enjoy a taste of flesh? Are you saying... Miss, are you... Is this a proposition? All right, how much coin are we talking about? Oh, I guess... She ticks the various expenses on her fingers. 30,000 copper ought to Whew. cover it. Oh my god, that is a lot. All right. No, but I'll get you the luminous Audra. The captain smiles wickedly, a mad cast darkening her features. Always a pleasure, pirate in his. I'll keep an eye on the horizon for your prosperous return. All right. How many do we... Oh, we have six, baby! We already got six! All right, let's quick save again. In case the Kehu gets really mad about me doing this. All right. Let's see. Bide where you are, lovesome. Dude, she totally wanted me to just, like, eat her out or something. Hell yes! <laughs> All right, continue. Well, regale me. I've got the Luminous Adra. Remind me again how much it costs for the Principe to keep smuggling food to the Raparu? I'm here to conduct some business with one of Dario's contracts, Gwenfin. Will you continue smuggling food to the Raparu? Punch her in the mouth! <laughs> you know, Dario, I'll be on my way. What happens if you just punch her in the mouth? Will she, would she just be like, Huh, good one, kid. You got some fucking moxie. Here, take 500 copper pond. <laughs> Let's see, I've got the Luminous Adra. I invite you to end it over swiftly, then. The captain's expression brightens, lit with her greed. Ah, oh, what Ooh, levels. Aye, fine work you've done. Work I won't be likely to forget. Ah, all right, cool. So oh, that's so great that we went in there and stole all that stuff. Just preemptively, just because I'm a fucking... <laughs> I can't help myself, I have a problem. The commander right. of my fleet and the relentless leader of us new bloods, Captain Aldi's, won't forget either. Mm. If you're feeling adventurous, you might call on her at Fort Deadlight. Fort Deadlight? Isn't that where we end up going with... Seraphin later? The dwarf laughs bodily, as if to an inside joke. A deal's a deal, then. Mm. We'll catch us a fresh contact. Round up the shipments again soon. Strong and sure. All right. The Ruparu will have to stand on their own two feet someday. But for now, we'll keep them out of the ground. Yeah, that's fair. There we go, got another level or something, I think, on Takehu? She dips her chin in a gruff nod, farewell. All right, cool. Oh no, on Jody, I guess? Yeah, Takehu must be slightly behind. Makes sense, because we got him uh, later. All right, let's quick save again and talk to Come. her again. Come, we'll drink to a better friendship. Pay no mind to the tang of the flavor. Well? Regale me. Let's see. You know Dario? Of course. He's my land lubbery contact in the gullet. Once he was a master sailmaker. Lots of Principe crews vied for him, but he lost his footing in the rigging one day. Oh! Which is why he still has a penchant for sewing and, like, uh, making his clothes or whatever. What was he doing? I think he was making his clothes. He was, like, putting... I don't know, sequins or something on him. He, he was really into it. All right. And after that? It's a mistake sailors make only once. Yeah. He shattered both legs. Was Elia's mercy that he broke nothing more. But after that, he lost his taste for the sea. What was it exactly? He was a master sailmaker, lots of principi- But he lost his footing in the rigging one day. Right, okay. Now what makes you a pirate, Lafsom? A blackened heart and insatiable lust for plunder? I'll bet you're going to tell me. Shake your head. I bet you're going to tell me. Sailing. It's sailing what makes you a right pirate. Sure, plundering too, but leave the seas and you leave the Principe. She grins. Perhaps Ferrante would disagree with you. Ah. Yeah, because they're having all the infighting, right? They, they're not quite in agreement with what, uh, with exactly how to go forward with the organization. All right. 
let's see if she says anything about this. Perhaps Ferrante would disagree with you. Aye, but Aldi's wouldn't. And she's the only other captain what matters to me. Huh. You don't see me flying Ferrante's flag now, do you? My loyalty lies with the new blood, the future, and the strength of the Principe. Ha, huh. all right. I'm excited to meet with Aldi's then. Because Ferrante, Seraphin, although he is aligned with the Principe, he doesn't seem too big on Ferrante, right? From what we recall of him, like, inserting messages into our mind. Okay, I'm here to conduct some business with one of Dario's contacts, Gwenfin. Guess I heard as much from a crew and you're free to go about then. But I'd ask that you keep your nose out of our affairs, else we need to slit it off. All right, I'll be on my way. She dips her chin in. Okay, yeah. Cool. Dope. Huh. Hmm? Well, let us level up Jody here. Let's see. What do we want here? Let's grab another point religion. I like having her being highly religious, right? It checks out. And then alchemy. Why not? I enjoy that. There we are. And let's see here. We get one ability. We've already got the nice... Oh, look, our thing is... There we go. Tooltips are still loading in a bit. Okay. Huh. What do we want here? We already have Devotions for the Faithful, yeah. Which is so useful. What was one of the other ones? Triumph of the Crusaders? Yeah. 60 strong. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty fucking good. Right. But Shining Beacon, wasn't that also useful? Yeah, 10 less defenses. Only for 9 seconds, though. Hmm. That's useful, but... I feel like Devotions of the Faithful is a better debuff, because it also functions as a buff. Alright. Let's see. Litany for the Body. That's pretty useful as well. Huh. Yeah, the 2 armor rating is quite good. I'm not sure both of these are quite good. Good buffs all around. Hmm. Maybe we want a passive for her, though. What other passives does she have access to? We could give her weapon and shield style, right? Because we could just always have her use her lantern, right? Hmm. Let's see, what else do you have access to here? Watchful presence, that was good. But that was only useful toward the end game, right? In Pillars 1, because earlier on, and even some encounters mid, pretty much only a dare could survive being near death, right? Everyone else, chances are you would, if once you got attacked, you could only take like two or three hits, and you would just be instantly knocked out. Right? Yeah, because this doesn't actually save you. It just, in the event that you get down to that point where it's possible, like if you go to zero, you're still going to die. All right. Divine Mark is also pretty good. I feel like Divine Mark is the debuff to beat, right? Because 25 less deflection for 10 seconds, that ain't half bad. Right? Despondent Blows. Hmm. Less accuracy with melee, that's also pretty good. Though I think right now, maybe Triumph of the Crusaders is the way to go. Because we already have a couple of good spells right here. Let's see. Only 10 seconds for that. Yeah, we already have a couple of good spells here in the form of Dire Blessing. Yeah. And Consecrated Ground for rank 3. What do we have here for rank 2, though? Pillar of Faith is pretty good, because it has the Interrupt. And this is good as a heal, but that'll become less and less useful, right? Hmm. Let's see. How about this? Holy Meditation. 15 seconds of Resolute. Not that useful. Repulsing Seal. A little too situational for me. Prayer for the Body. Everyone becomes fit for 60 seconds. Eh. And Withdraw. Yeah, Withdraw is pretty good. Early on, Withdraw is pretty useful. Well, actually, Withdraw is just useful, right? It's just a decent one to have. Okay, you know what? I think we go with Triumph of the Crusaders. I do like that. Boom. Taking it. And it's also uh, scalable. I like how it, once we've picked this, the spell shaping, it shows all the ones that are spell shapeable. That's a really nice little addition, right? Okay, cool. 
Oh, we get another... Who's a what's it? Okay. Are rods one-handed? No, they are the largest. Okay, and we know scepters definitely don't work either. Huh. We could let her in on pistols. That doesn't seem very Jody-like, but we could. Huh. I'm not sure yet. We could give her access to another shield. Right? Wasn't there, like, a wizard-type shield? I think there was. Hmm. There was some kind of... caster shield, wasn't there? That we had found. I think it was medium, but it may have been large. Eh, fuck it, we'll... Yeah, we'll pick this for now. We'll pick medium shield. Right, in case there's another castery type shield that's not as good or better than her lantern. There we are. Boom. Perfect. I really like the idea that Jody is kind of perfectly set up to tank, right? Alright, here I'll pick some stuff for myself. Let's see, what do we want here? Should we get another point in streetwise? Or bluff? Yeah, let's get bluff up to 10, including party assist. Because we'll pretty much always have Adair and Aloth with us, especially Adair. I don't see a situation in which there is never Adair with us. Aloth, that could... We could trade out, like, Takehu could fulfill the same role as Aloth, potentially. Right? And let's get here... Let's get more sleight of hand, right? I'm down with it. There we are. <laughs> Pump that up to 15. Good. Alright. And then... What do we want here? Choose an ability for one class. Okay. How about we get... Let's see. Did we have... Let's see. Rogue abilities. Let's see. Huh. This costs two guile. Which ain't half bad, right? The finishing blow is probably going to be our guile dump. That's what I'm thinking. Right? Let's see, range gives a bonus deflection. Yeah, I think finishing blow is just too damn good, right? We don't really need the blind, because we've already got Aloth with plenty of blinds. Maybe we get a passive. Maybe that's a good call. Huh. Let's see, what kind of passives do we have at? Or maybe there's some stuff here that we're neglecting. Like one of these barrage abilities, perhaps? Hmm... We could also get some additional recovery, right? We do have reduced recovery from being Black Jacket. Or maybe we upgrade this, right? Just give it additional buffs. That might be a good call. That way our, like, opening salvo is more effective. Yeah, maybe we do that. That's probably smart. Okay, acute, plus five int, abilities and spells. Plus one power level. Eh. I'm guessing this was, yeah, this was the good shit. Intuitive characters have plus five perception, 50% graze to hit, and 25% hit to graze. Ooh, what a nice thing. All right. Yeah, we're definitely going with that. And it still costs one discipline, right? Yeah, perfect. So we'll always be able to open combat with this and then uh, start hammering away with penetrating strike and then finish them off with finishing blow. Eh. And we got our little thing worked out. Good. I like it. Alright. Oh, look, we get more shit. Man, how many of these do we even get? Quite a few. It seems. Huh, what do we want here? Let's see. Yeah, they're all piercing. I'm not sure. Maybe we want a shield, right? We could go with a small shield, I guess. If we ever wanted wanted to, right? Maybe there will be a small shield that's good for range damage? Maybe. Could go with a pistol arrow. I think we take it. Why not? Because right now we've got pretty much everything we need. Yeah. Let's go with it. Small shield just in case. Just in case we find something nice. Worst case, we'll just respect later. Alright. And then next. Let's see. Let's get a dare. Take a look at what he's got. And we should probably pump up athletics one more, right? That seems smart. But we could do mechanics, right? 
But I'm thinking athletics is the way to go. Alright. Yeah. Okay, now what do we want here? Maybe survival again. I think that's smart. Okay. Now here, what do we want? We could get mule kick. Let's see. Knock up and disoriented, right? Yeah. Because the original does not disorient. Which is pretty nice. Okay, we need to think about what we want Adair to be spamming in melee. And I'm thinking Mule Kick has probably got to be it, right? Huh. Clear out? Or is that more for... Push all enemies back... Uh, push back all enemies. And this... Now hits all enemies. Alright. Huh. Knocking them back and prone. I don't really like the idea of knocking them back, though. Right? Power strike. Eh. Let's see, how about under rogue? What would Adair want here for being a rogue? Oh, uh, we should get him blinding strike, right? Yeah, we were thinking about that. We should totally do that, right? That would be perfect. That could be, like, his spammable. For, uh, Guile. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Which, uh, which upgrade would we want? Let's see, confounding. Stacking penalty to deflection. Yeah, that's great. Especially with his little shield that lets him attack as well. Yeah. Okay. While blinded, all attacks on the target add a stacking penalty to deflection. That's pretty good. How about over here? Raw damage over time? Yeah, okay. It's definitely gotta be blinding strike. Perfect. All right. Let's see, what kind of other weapon do we want? Hatchet, right? Hatchets are the ones that give, yeah, extra deflection. Yeah, easy enough. Taking it. Alright. Yeah, cool, that was simple. It's the way that you're making me feel tonight. Let's see. Aloth, what have you got? Arcana, we should pump that up. And how about metaphysics? Yeah, there we are. Especially since Takehu will not always be in our party. Okay, we could specialize in a type of damage here, right? Plus one penetration. But I'm not sure if we want to, because a lot of Alos stuff is not... Huh. That is just penetration. Let's see. What will most of Alos' abilities even be, eventually? We could make him be a frosty wizard. Blast of Frost. No. We kind of just make him use whatever debuffs, right? Which isn't necessarily... one thing. Though Chill Fog is probably our go-to. Illusions... Maybe we just want another spell from this tier. Because we don't yet have one actually committed, it's just from our Grimoire. Alright, maybe we should do that. Wall of Flame... No, just regular burn damage. Writhing tentacles. That seems foul. <laughs> Let's see. Essential phantom. No. Arcane reflection. It's only on self. Pull of Aora. No. Flame shield. No. Yeah, we've already got confusion, which is kind of our go-to. Huh. I guess we could pick wall of flame, right? That could be an okay DPS AoE. Let's see. Summons a trio of powerful tentacles that cannot move, but inflict crush and corrode damage, and, they, and immobilize anyone they hit. That could be useful, right? Hmm. Maybe we go with that. Let's see. Electricity, fire, frost and water, acid and decay. Yeah... We do have this, which is... Oh, that's transmutation. Huh. Okay. Noxious burst. There we go, acid. Okay. It makes them sickened. Yeah, that's pretty useful, but we don't have it yet. And chill fog we almost always use. But do we even need the penetration on it? Because mostly we use it for the blind effect and the... The damage is just... Icing on the cake. Huh. Both of... Hmm. There's a lot of good things to pick from here. <laughs> Alright. You know what? We've never used Mara's... Uh, Mora's writhing tentacles, have we? Fuck it. Let's do it. 
Let's get some tentacle action going on. Like, this will be good for big old bosses and to distract, right? Like, we can have ads thrown up from both Palagina and Aloth, right? In the event that uh, we come to an encounter where they're not... Yeah, because this will be our... All right, great. This is our idea. If we need to do crowd control and convert some people or just put more bodies on the field, right? For Aloth, we either have confusion to just straight up convert them to our side temporarily, or we can throw out a couple of three tentacles, right? I think that's a great idea. Perfect. And of course, we'll have Palagina with us who can do her summons as well. Great. I like that. Like I said, worst case, we'll just respec. Okay. Hmm. What about Aloth here? What do we want? Maybe we'll pick Wand? Does he yet have... Yeah, Rod and Scepter. Okay, they both have two damage types. Good. We'll have him pick Wand, just in case there's a Wand or something that's good. Or do we want, like, a Quarter Staff? Increased Reach? No. Yeah, because that's, that's just Rod, right? Yeah, we'll pick Wand, just in case. Good. All right. Cool. What do you need? Now, let's it. head on out through this, right? Let's see here. Because I'm curious if, any if anything happens with going this route. And then we can go on over to Prince Aruhi, lie to Prince Aruhi. <laughs> and then we can turn in... We'll turn in the quest, and then we'll trade out to Kehu for Palagina for when we go into the ancient Juana temple, right? That seems like a good plan. Do a quick save here. Now, row to Queen's Barth. Ooh. Silent as a becalmed sea, you row through the narrow cavern into Nakataka's Bay, making your way to Queen's Barth. Huh, that was relatively simple, right? All right. Yeah, so I think all of our business is just... Yeah, because we already did the stuff with Seduzo. We already spoke with Biha. We turned in the cure. I think that's it, right? Do we have levels to go down into... the Undercroft area? Hmm. If not, we may have to put that off and go sailing over to Fort Deadlight? Was it? Wherever... Yeah, wherever Seraph and, and Ferrante want us to go to, right? We should absolutely do that. In fact, maybe we should just do that anyway. Because it may be that the intention is that we were supposed to do that early on. Because we do get interrupted, right? That's totally a scripted event. As soon as you leave Port Maje. And the only reason we decide not to do it is because we'd already done that in the streaming long ago. But uh, it might be good to do that instead. Maybe that's a good idea. Hmm. Would there be any downside to doing that? I don't think so. I think we should do that. Yeah, we should definitely do that. All right, yeah, that's our plan. We'll turn in this with Prince Aruhi, pick up Seraphin instead of Maya. We'll trade out to Kehu for Seraphin and then head on over to Fort Deadlight, I think it was. All right. Yeah, good plans. All right. Let's see, where does this even put us out at? Will we be able to use another boat again here? To just quick travel down there from Queen's Barth? Because that'd be pretty dope. I'd be down with that. There was, oh, there was that little tiny dock, remember? We had to investigate where, um, yeah, right here. Oh, this is it. Oh, and we can fast travel down right into, what do you call it, place? Thinking. Oh, yeah, with a Veta. I was thinking it would be hers, but no, it's right across the way. Okay, cool. I like that. Oh, is this a water, sh no. <laughs> no, it's just a guard right there. All right, let's see. Should we head on out? How much money do we have at the moment? 5K. Yeah, we're getting some money back. Tarn's res Respite. When the hell did we get Tarn's Respite? Did we get this as a reward from someone? I don't remember Tarn's Respite at all. Where the fuck did this come from? This must have been a reward, right? Let's see. We got it after we picked up Taru Turu Chiu and Mad Morena's key. Oh, we must have gotten this from Dario, right? We had to have. All right. Let's see. Sharp. Exceptional. Cold Steel. Penetration plus one. 15% damage is freeze. Oh. That's always fun. Which we can't normally get that 
in Pillars 2, right? It's not like Pillars 1 where it's just an enchant. All right. Tarn's Respite. This saber's origins are unknown. Yeah, you're telling me. Though its steel composition suggests it may have been forged in the White March. A retired Adiran privateer named Tarn Barris discovered the blade by happenstance in a ruined watchtower on his estate in the Eastern Reach. When the Emperor recalled Tarn to service during the War of Defiance, he took the weapon with him. Tarn, no longer a young man, was not enthusiastic about returning to sea, but he served the Empire resolutely. He was tasked with interdicting Valian Corsairs who were shipping supplies to rebels in the Deerwood. An honorable man, Tarn elected to spare the ships and crews he captured, after relieving them of their cargo. As such, he rarely found a cause to draw his blade. Tarn's largest, Larges, would be his undoing, however. Within the year, he was killed under a flag of parley while negotiating terms. The Corsair who slew him took Tarn's saber as a trophy. And what's the enchanting here? From cold steel to brittle frost? Minus one target deflection on hit. Stacks ten times! Whoa! Huh! Well, that's pretty fucking good. Jeez. Deep freeze. Oh, shit. Or action speed. Oh, wow. Both of these are very good. Jesus, maybe we should make a dare use this. What does this do again? Grant scrim, which is... Let's see here. What was that again? Plus 10% melee damage, plus 5 deflection when wielded with a shield. That's nice, but fucking A, dude. There's something I can do. Let's see. What are his passives? He doesn't have a sword passive, which honestly we probably should have picked up, right? Or we didn't have the option to, did we? I can't even remember. Oh yeah, we picked up Hatchet. Yeah, that's way more important. <laughs> Sorry. Alright. Ah. <sighs> dude, I'm thinking we go with this. We go with the Saber, right? And we can enchant it up. We can even just enchant it right here on the spot and make it excellent. Because the stacking effect of less deflection on whatever Adair is fighting... God, that would be so good! Or even action speed, that is also really good, but I'm kind of down for the less deflection thing, right? Yeah, because Aloth can handle the other shit. Our crowd control folks can do that. Look at that, that is so good, we're doing it. We're enchanting this right on the fucking spot. Tarn's Respite. There we go. Adding Brittle Frost to Tarn's Respite will prevent you from adding Deep Freeze. Would you like to add Brittle, Fro Brittle Bitter Frost? Brittle Frost? <laughs> yes, I would. You've successfully enchanted Tarn's Respite with Brittle Frost. Great! I love it! Alright. Let's throw this on a Daryl. Check this out, dude. You're gonna love this shit. There we go. And it's totally in his style. Adair fucking loves sabers and shit. Alright, cool. And he can still offhand- I wonder if- You don't think- You don't think the Brittle Frost applies to his entire character, right? So any hit with any weapon or attack grants that, right? That would be too good. That would be too powerful. That's only the attacks made with his primary weapon, like a full attack or an auto attack, right? If he ever bashes with his offhand shield, it wouldn't- Now. Now. All right, yeah, it's fine. All right, it's good. Good, good, good. Look at fucking Adair. Loving it. All right. Let's head on out here over to... Hmm. Let's head to Prince Aruhi, right? Where is Prince Aruhi at? I was about to say Prince Aruhi is up at, um... Let's see. Prince Aruhi. Or Aru... Aruhi. There we go, that's it. Inform Annoy about the deal. Oh, we still need to talk to Annoy, okay. Well, we should totally do that. Okay. Let's see, trade secrets. Yep, we can take... Okay, yeah, it's Serpent's Crown. Yeah, I was wondering yeah, if Prince course. Aruhi, like... If I was either mistaken and they... Prince Aruhi was at the... Water Shapers Guild, or perhaps moved there for some reason when we picked up to Kehu. But no, totally at the Water Shapers Guild. Or at the Serpent's Crown. <laughs> the other way around. Alright. Let's see. Oh, we should save right here, just in case we have an encounter. Alright. And then... Let's see. We want to go to just Kahanga Palace, right? Because he was on the interior. 
I love that so much. There are so many little extra handy additions made, right? Dope! Ah, no random encounter this time. Usually we get one heading out of Queen's Bears, but... Eh, they can't all be... Losers? <laughs> I don't know, sometimes you get something out of them. You get something nice. I guess in a way you could just farm those, right? Do they ever repeat? I guess if they don't repeat, you couldn't actually farm them. Random encounters, I should say. Huh. Yeah, you could just get, like, infinite money, right? If they're- depending on how many there are and if they repeat. Yeah. Alright. Let's head on over here. Where is the prince? Over in the throne room, I'm assuming. Let's do another quick save. Let's see. There he is. Yeah. Is the queen in? No, she's probably upstairs getting fanned. Alright, what's up, Prince Aruihi? I see you pulled Ngatis Chosen from the guild hall. Aruihi nods to Takehu. Akira, but have you pried any secrets from the gullet yet? Aruihi raises his brow and motions for you to go on. The Principi are smuggling cargo via the Undercroft. Lie. Afraid I didn't find anything. I had other questions. If you don't mind, I'll report in later. Yeah, let's lie to him. Fuck it. Nothing? Takehu, what say? Don't you snitch, Takehu. We stumbled on evidence of abandoned Roparu settlements, but nothing more. Yes! Alright, Takehu clears his throat, aiming you a worried look. And Jody dislikes the skullduggery. <laughs> and they invoice medallion? What? It just washed ashore? Ooh, we're good at lying. Yes! The prince waves his arms in the air in a mock conjuration. Maybe? Say nothing. Let's see. Maybe the pirates were baiting you with a false lead. Too clever for their kind by far, I say. He trails off and scratches his jaw, weighing the idea like the balance of a weapon. Onikaza entrusted this job to remove a matter from her plate. But, Ikira, I cannot waste precious hours interrogating you. Aruihi sighs and waves the matter off. Ikira, but at least you return to me in one piece. You are not the first agent I sent to the gullet. But you are the first to return. Aroihi grins in spite of himself and claps you on the shoulder. Oh, is he the one who sent the now renegade water shapers? Maybe they fake their deaths or they just, I guess, mutinied for lack of a better word. All right. I cannot say that I desire to send you to worse places than the gullet, but... But I will. <laughs> Aroihi trails off and scratches the back of his head. But you're going to anyway. <laughs> yeah, we have to say that. If, if it's something I say in real life, we pretty much have to say it. All right, but you're going to anyway. Ikira, my apologies. Does the name Ukaizo mean anything to you? It does, but let me just mouse over this and refresh myself. Ukaizo is a mythical island, right? Rumored to be somewhere in the Deadfire Archipelago. Some legends regard Ukaizo as the wellspring of Hwana culture, right? We know all about that, because the other quest for the tablet they want. This guy's going to have me sneak into Archimers, isn't he? Huh. Let's see, we can do a Deadfire check. I believe it's a sacred island somewhere in the Deadfire. Or a history check. A lost city, if local fables are to be believed. Doesn't sound familiar. Now let's do the Deadfire check. It was the island capital of the Hwana Empire of old. A fable, they say. Fable? No. History, I say. Ukaizo was the home of the Hwana before cataclysm and destruction wiped the island from the dead fire. That is the story. Man, everyone seems so sure that this fabled legend, everyone that we've talked to involving, like, the quest to find Ukaizo, seems completely convinced that it is real and totally exists, right? What if we go there and it's totally not exactly what we were expecting, right? Or it just flat out doesn't even exist? All right, continue. Story or no, I make no secret that we search for Kaizo. He studies you, allowing his words to sink in. Our tribes are spread across many isles, but it is Ukaizo which binds us. Ukaizo, and the knowledge that we must return. To that end, a local cartographer secured a lead. A breadcrumb to a breadcrumb, I say. I sent an expedition to Matario Kozi, one of the Sanctuary Isles. They were to retrieve evidence of our lost homeland. They have huh. yet to return. Sanctuary Isles? I trust you'll relay my helpfulness to the Queen. I'll keep an eye out. No promises. 
There won't be a stone unturned on Matare O Cozy when I'm done with it. Sanctuary eyes? There were sites where our ancestors grouped in terms of crisis. Constants in changing seas. Hmm. You have the cartographer Atepo to thank. He wanders the western shrine if you would know more. Oh. The prince makes a dismissive wave toward the door. Alright. What makes you think that Mataro or Matare Okozi contains evidence of Ukaizo? The sanctuary isles give comfort and guidance to sailors on the long journey home. I am hoping the island can remember its purpose and return us to the home we lost. How has the island remained hidden all this time? The question for those with years to gather reeds and scribe their thoughts. It's actually a gigantic turtle, right? <laughs> Aruihi smooths back his hair and sighs. It might be that someone or something on the island does not wish to be found. In better times than these, I would have been happy to oblige. Should I expect any resistance? The trading companies would not have thought to look for Matari or Kozi, but now they are vultures to carry in. I do not doubt that our rivals race for the same thing, all while we fall behind. Aroihi sighs. Oh, this seems like another place where we'll have to pick a side. All right, hey, no further questions. Ikira, then you are ready to depart? Let's see. Well, I trust you'll relay my helpfulness to the queen. Naturally, I say... My sister remembers her friends. I remember her enemies. Aruihi winks. To Kehu, I trust you are going. I want the tribes to know that Ngati's chosen stood among those who threw open the gates of Ukaizo. He turns a hopeful gaze to Takehu. I make no promises of dirtying my hands in some fetid jungle, but I do not protest a calm voyage. Oh, irresponsibility. Aloth and Jody both dislike it. All Before right. you go. Oh, Ar Aruihi lowers his tone and glances to his left and right. Uh, that did seem like too nice a way to end it. <laughs> the expedition. I have reason to believe they will not be returning to Nekataka. So you are sending me to certain death. Say nothing. Huh. Now let, let's, let's say this. So you are sending me to certain death. You forget yourself, but I am more forgiving than my sister. Huh. All right. Takehu... Likes that, but Aloth does not. Right. Okay, continue. We found this at the palace doorstep, cut from the robe of the expedition leader. He reaches into his pocket and draws forth a wad of red-stained bark cloth. One mystery heaped on another, I say. He drags his thumb over the cloth and frowns to himself. Who could have sent this? Let me see that. I might be able to learn something from it. I had better be on my way. You conveniently forgot to mention this until I agreed to the mission. Wait, did he actually explain what the fuck it was? We found this at the palace doorstep, cut from the robe of an expedition leader. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a threat. I gotcha. Okay. Who do you think could have sent it? If you learn in your travels, I hope you will tell me. Huh. The crown has grown too accustomed to warnings, I say. He thumbs the fabric and frowns. Let me see that. I might be able to learn something from it. Nodding, he relinquishes the scrap. A fragment of essence clings to the fabric, like a thread woven too tightly to be unraveled. Ooh. Trees tower above you, and ropey vines stretch like tentacles across a marshy ruin. It takes all of your strength to trudge through the hip-deep water. You glance over your shoulder, but the women and men of your company aren't there. Then a shape moves off in the distance. You draw your weapon, feeling now more alone than ever. The vision departs, leaving you with a deep pit in your stomach and the phantom sensation that nothing has gone as it should have. The prince regards you expectantly. The owner of this robe is surely dead. Hold out hope for the rest. Survival check. Nature is restless on this island, but I can guess nothing more. Lie. I couldn't get a read on it. Sorry. She's dead. They're all dead. Let's see. Now we have no reason to lie here about this. Alright, nature is restless on this island, but I can guess nothing more. I suspected this, as you say. Take care if you alight on Matario Cozy. My fear is that the island is sanctuary no more. 
Sighing, Prince Aruihi folds the cloth with reverence. Prepare yourself for a hard voyage northeast of Nekataka. Matari Okozi is nestled in the core of Rokuhu Islands, in the midst of a landmass that resembles a storm, like the fall of Ukaizo locked in time. Huh. Aruihi bites his thumbnail and turns away, lost in thought. Certain death it is, then. Eh, we've been through worse, Takehu. Welcome to the team. <laughs> All right, let's get right. everyone up here together. Let's see. I'm assuming this is yeah Takei who recommended. Good. All right. We may have we may yet respect Takei who to just straight up fulfill Alos crowd control role. Right. That may be what we end up doing since they don't already get along. It might make more sense to just keep them together or separate. I should say. All right. Look, Takei who also wants to speak. Let's talk to him here. You catch Takehu glancing your way. He quickly focuses elsewhere and smooths back his hair when he notices your attention. Something on your mind? Is there anything the Watcher does not see? Takehu grins, but the look quickly diminishes. We have both seen the worst of the city. How the Raparu cluster like sea rats. Takehu's hand unconsciously strays toward his stomach. Delver's robe will take care of them for a time. But I say the crown will not suffer the Principi for long. Mm. How did the stone walls and paved lanes of Nekataka divide us so? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a thing to say. How did these walls end up dividing us? <laughs> he sighs, shaking his head. You have walked the length of Nekataka's spine. How would you serve the needs of all these people at once? Hmm. I'd start with what you have and find a better system. You know, we were talking about earlier how the system failed the Raparu and all the people down there in the gullet, right? Because they're so fucked over. But uh, in thinking about that, the system didn't fail them at all. The system worked. The system is built to fuck them over, right? It's built to fuck them over and benefit the people living up here with their gigantic, massive, coral lighting fixtures, right? It's working exactly as intended. Alright. I'd start with what you have and find a better system. I would let people organize their lives as they saw fit. I'd collaborate on a new plan for the city. I'd stay out of it. Fix nothing, break nothing. Huh. I do like the idea of find a better system, but I also like the collaborate on a new plan for the city. Huh. Both of these are good in my opinion. I like both of these. Find a better system or collaborate. I mean that... I guess I like them so much because they're so similar. Huh. Let's see. Or what What would we want Takehu to, to hear? Start with what you have and find a better system. Or collaborate on a new plan for... I don't know, they're both so similar. Fuck it, I'd collaborate on a new plan for the city. You think that something in the great pattern of Nekataka does not align with the Hawana way? Yeah, everything down there. Everything down there in the gullet is fucked up big time, dude. Nodding, Takehu absently tugs one of his hairs. For the moment, he seems totally withdrawn. Finally, he snaps back into focus, regarding you with a smile which seems both genuine and strained. I was hard-pressed to find insight like yours in Pariki's overlook. Some of the tension leaves Takehu's shoulders, and he stands a little taller than before. Oh, I like this so much. I'm really enjoying his arc and all that. All right, I have more questions for you. You have questions? Ikera, I have answers. Nah, sorry. <laughs> it's all stuff we've heard before. All right, let us head on out. Let's see. Hmm. I don't think we'll turn in the quest to annoy just yet, but we will head on over to the gullet, I think, and we'll turn in stuff there. Or not turn in stuff, we'll swap out to Kehu there, right? Because we can't swap to Kehu out here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We'll head on over to the gullet, go to the inn, the hole in the wall or whatever, and then we'll swap out to Kehu for... Oh god, who do we need to swap him out for? <laughs> eh? Probably, no yeah, problem. Maya, just for the sake of having Maya with us for combat, right? I am- I'm definitely considering respecting Takehu for 
being more focused on crowd control. He's already got a little bit, but he's kind of double dipping into healing and crowd control. That way we have two healers, Jody and Palagina, and then we have two... Um, we have two crowd control in the form of Aloth and Takehu, right? Alright. Let's see. And the gullet, we want to go to the hole. Oh, actually we should save first, just in case. There we are. And then the gullet, the hole. Cool. See if we get an encounter along the way. Ah, we're fine. Alright, yeah. And, yeah, the only quest we have to turn in here is with... What's her butt? Old Annoy. Yeah. Do we want Seraphin with us when we're dealing with the Principe? Maybe. I'm not sure. We may, we may very well want him with us. Huh. Which would mean... Alright. So then they would be our two different damage dealers, right? Yeah, so we can have people who swap out. So myself and Adair will be the constants, right? We'll always be in the team, no matter what. But depending on our needs, we can swap out either Palagina or Jody for healing, uh, Ser Seraphin or Maya for DPS, or Takehu and Aloth for crowd control. I think that's a great call. Yeah, I think sure. that's absolutely perfect. All right. Let's see. Fierna. Need something? Let's see. I'd like to what buy you something. Need? You know, if any sailor's looking for work, I need sure. crew. Sure, I know a few folks who need coin, and a couple of them can even hold their liquor. All right. Let's see. Well, actually, I lied. <laughs> there we go, party management. And, oh shit, hang on. Does Takehu have anything good on him? Let's see. Oh, he's just wearing his robe. <laughs> we should get more than that, but uh, what can we do? Oh yeah, we should give this to... Halgot's warmth is specific for priesting. There we go. Almost totally forgot about that. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry there, Jody. And I'll grow to like it. Need something? What right. you need? And let's see. Got any regulars You'll looking for adventure? There we go. Okay. Then I have Takehu. to attend to as well, you know. And we'll swap. You know what? Let's get Seraphin in on this, right? Fuck it. Let's do it. Because this is some Principe shit. Why not have him with us? Fuck it. Seraphin has been underutilized so far. And honestly, he's fucking good. Actually, I... I really enjoy all the companions this time around, right? Maybe because there's less mainline companions because the sidekicks are able to fulfill those roles, right? I think so. Because we've got one, two... Yeah, we've only got two sidekicks so far. But I believe there's a lot more, right? All right, here, Seraphin. There we are. Whereas, like, in the first game, weren't there more companions who would go with you? Or maybe that's just because I'm thinking of the White March exclusive companions, like Maneha and the Devil of Karak and all that shit. Or maybe it was just two of them. I don't know. But either way, I'm, I personally, I like the companions a lot more this time around. Which isn't to say that all the companions were bad in Pillars 1, just that um, there were ones that I liked and ones I didn't like. I had favorites, absolutely. Whereas here, kind of like them all so far. All right. When next we come back, I'll have leveled up Seraphin and all that good shit. Until next time, peace!